I knew that there was this other cat coming in here. All right, we're gonna fix his wagon. Where'd he go? Wow, he's a sneaky one. This trail leads right into here. Oh, I saw him way in the back there. So for like the last 20 minutes or so, I've been having a standoff with our cat friend here. He scared the other cats away from the food. He's just been sitting there. But I think he sees me in this window because I'm just looking right out there. And so he doesn't want to come any closer, but he's definitely getting more brazen. Like if this had happened a week ago, he probably would have just invisibled himself. But no, he's just hanging out and staring me down right now. Oh no, look, Molly's terrified. It's okay. I chased him away. And I don't even know where baby Jin is. Looks like I'm gonna have a challenge on my hands and looks like I'm gonna have to trap a cat. Ginny, come here. Did the new cat scare you off? Okay, you can eat your food again. No wonder you've been so hungry lately. For like the past, maybe week and a half, two weeks, I have noticed subtle signs that there is another cat hanging around the farm. You know, it's like when I walk into the barn and I see out of the corner of my eye, a cat dart across and it doesn't come up and say hello to me like Molly or Ginny would. I've also noticed that Molly and Ginny have been acting way hungrier than they used to, which I'm assuming is because some other cat is stealing their food. And Molly in particular has been on high alert and very, very, I don't know, cautious and flighty. And I even noticed she got like a little bit of a scrape the other day where she lost some fur. I think it was like somewhere over here. She has like a little bald spot. And all of those would indicate to me that there was a cat hanging around. So I set up this camera this morning when I fed them their morning breakfast to see what was going on. And well, you guys already saw what happened. So in today's video, I'm gonna be trying to catch this cat and see what his deal is or her deal is. Molly knows what's up. Ginny's still on high alert. Please excuse my messy barn. I saw him dart back that way. To catch this cat, it's gonna require a plan. So I'm bringing Molly Barncat and Ginny Barncat inside tonight because I have a plan to capture Squatter Cat. He has become very comfortable with eating off of our porch, and so I hope to take advantage of that. And what I've done is I've taken a have a heart trap and I put a cover over it. And I'm gonna put food inside the have a heart trap. And my hope is that we're gonna be able to catch him tonight. And while I'm hopeful that this is gonna work, I'm not 100% confident. As longtime viewers of our channel may recall, I've had issues with trying to trap other cats in the past. Most notably in the winter, right around this time last year, we had another cat set up shop in our barn. He went by the name of Hobo Barn Cat, and he was super elusive. Although I tried over and over and over again to catch him, I was never successful, and eventually he navigated further away from the farm and just stopped coming back. And in case folks are wondering, based on the marking of the cat that I saw this morning, I know that that cat is not the same cat as Hobo Cat. So just let me put those conspiracy theories to rest. But yeah, my hope is I'm gonna set out some really good food, and I hope he gets really interested in it. And that trap is just gonna snap shut on him. All right, let's see if this is gonna work. It's starting to get dark out. I'm sure he's hanging out somewhere in the barn over there. Let's see if this is gonna work. Come on, Molly. Come on, Ginny. Let's go, Ginny. Come on, Molly. Oh, she's so nervous. I know you're reluctant to come outside today. Come on. Oh boy. Looks like our trap was sprung. Let's see if we had any success. Oh. Hey, buddy. Take it easy, take it easy. Oh boy. Definitely want my gloves on for this one. He is an angry cat. I keep saying him, I don't know if it's a him. Hey bud, don't hurt yourself. It's gonna be okay. I think I'm gonna find a temporary space for you in the barn. I really only have two secure locations to house a cat in the barn. Upstairs where Ginny and Molly like to stay. And then I have this brooder room that used to be an old milk cooler room. I'm pretty sure that this room will be secure against cat escape. I've actually wired it so it's predator proof so that I can raise baby birds. The bedding is fairly fresh. I had Buck the Rooster in here last time. Um, so I think this will be his spot. The only way he can escape is actually out this door right here. So my hunch is I'm gonna let him go and he's gonna run to the farthest point from me. Put some food down. Give our new friend some clean water. Okay, buddy. 
I'm gonna let you out in a second here. Come on out, pal. There you go. I know, man, that's secure. I figured he'd be climbing on the walls. Oh, careful, bud. I want you to hurt yourself or break something here. Yeah, this room's a little bit of a mess. I don't think he can get out. Nice looking cat. Whoa, easy. He must have shattered himself through that window. It's okay, buddy. My biggest point of escape risk is probably this window that's covered in chicken wire. Like if you really went to town on it, went crazy, you might be able to break through it. But there really isn't a good spot for him to get leverage to try to break through it, so I think it should be okay. All the other potential exits are pretty well covered. It's okay, don't freak out. I know you don't like this cage. I I've definitely scared you. Easy, pal. Right, I'm gonna let you get acclimated to your new home. I tell you not to screw stuff up, but uh, I don't think that's quite possible at this point. That is some chaos right there. I even have a double lock on this door, so I don't think he'll be able to get out. And let's go do our chores. <laughs> what do you think of that chaos, Molly Murder Mittens? Huh? <laughs> Pretty chaotic, isn't it, girl? Let loose the goose! Of all the chaos there, Abby. You're doing really good with it. We got a problem. I left the door open to Toby's yard. Hey, you guys, get out of here. Out, out, out. All the geese gotta get out. Get away from there, Abby. Hey, get away. Uh, this goose she keeps coming back here. Abby, no, you're not allowed to play with that goose. Out you go. Would you look at that? That lady goose. Already just laid a goose egg. Oh, I know. Piping hot. Toby likes it as a house, but the geese love it as a nest. All right, let's keep this door closed, Abby. Don't try to eat this egg either. I want this egg. I might try to eat this egg. Well, it looks like the pond might be melting today. I bet you by the time we hit lunchtime, the ducks will be swimming in there, no doubt. What do you think, Abby? Are you gonna take a dip? Now, I'm certain many of you are probably wondering, what am I gonna do with this stray barn cat that we've now caught? You know, I do wanna make sure this barn cat is healthy. You know, I don't know if some of you guys remember, but last fall, we actually found a barn cat, or at least a stray cat here on the farm. I had seen him around maybe about three or four months prior, but then uh, back, I think it was like in September, I found him lying underneath the barn and he was not in good shape. I carefully brought him to the vet. The emergency vet took a look at him and really said there was no chance of him recovering and he had a lot of neurological damage and they even thought it might be rabies. You guys might even remember that I had to then rush little Ginny barn cat to the vet to make sure that she hadn't been infected with rabies because it was just still like a couple weeks shy of her normal inoculation period. And so unfortunately Dave barn cat had to be put down and he didn't have rabies, but it was a scary incident. That's why anytime there's like a stray cat on the farm, I do not want him mixing in with my other cats, which is why I don't even want to keep him in the room that I usually have kept, you know, Molly and Ginny when they need to be kept inside. Like it just has a much greater risk of cross contamination. And obviously this cat had been mixing in with my cats for the last few days. They had been fighting. That cat had been stealing their food and eating out of their dish. And yeah, that's all true, but I don't have to like compound on the interaction. So I'm just trying to do little things to lower the risk. Toby Dog sees something out there. I can tell with his body language when he's just going for a walk and when he might suspect something's out there. And right now, based on watching him, it looks like he's got like some sort of scent. Not a strong one though, but just something. Meanwhile, Abby is just being puppy and curious. All right, let's go feed you. Come on, Molly girl, I'm gonna feed you. Ginny, it's breakfast time. Where did Ginny go? Ginny! 
she might still be spooked because the cat is living in there. She was just right here. She was crawling on my shoulder and everything. Oh, there she is. She's doing her business right by that oak tree. <laughs> Come on, Jen. Let's feed you. Come on. Like, watch Molly. Look how she eats. It's like she takes a bite every so often and then she looks up. Meanwhile, Ginny's sniffing around, wondering if something's here. They're definitely a little more nervous than usual. They're gonna be on guard for a while, I think. Hey, Toby Dog. Hey, Abba Girl. So I'm pretty certain everybody wants an update on the cat that I trapped a couple of days ago. You know, I put out flyers, I posted on the internet and in Facebook groups. I even went to Front Porch Forum. I did everything I possibly could to try to find the owner of that cat and nobody surfaced. And in fact, quite the opposite happened. Several people approached me and said that they had seen that cat wandering around a nearby town from here about a year ago and so my hunch is based on both the behavior I saw out of that cat plus what I've been hearing from other folks that this is a totally feral cat that we're dealing with. So that means that the best option for this cat would be to rehome it and find a nice place for it to live while also making sure it gets fixed and gets the proper veterinary care. Well, it just so happens I have some friends who run a duck and goose and chicken farm and hatching operation about 45 minutes or an hour from here. And on their farm, because they have so many birds, I think they have like more than 800 birds in fact. They've been having a bit of a rodent problem and they've been having a bit of a weasel problem. As you guys know, I preach that barn cats are the solution to rodent problems as well as small predator problems. And so the plan was hatched that we're gonna rehome the cat that I caught at this new farm and they would take ownership of them and take vet responsibility and it would be out of my hair. I didn't really wanna have them here because the cat has been such a terror for Molly and Ginny. I just didn't really want the bad blood here on our farm. Now transporting the cat was gonna be a bit of a hassle, right? You know, this is basically a feral cat and as you saw when I first released him into the brooder room, He's a wee bit wild. So I decided to take some of the pain medication that the vet prescribed Pablo when he first had his bladder stones. If you know your drugs, it's gabapentin. So I crushed up a pill and mixed it in with some food. And my plan was to go out to the brooder room, set the food down, let him eat the food, get him a little groggy, and then hopefully have that be easier for me to get him into a crate so that I could transport him to this new farm. Unfortunately, when I went inside the milk room, it was like he was gone. I looked in every nook, I looked in every crevice. He hadn't slipped out when I opened the door. He was there the night before when I checked on him and gave him fresh food and water. But he had vanished like it was miraculous my first instinct was to check the chicken wire on the window structurally speaking the window and the chicken wire was always going to be my weak point and if this cat was escaping that's where he was getting through it was completely intact and he clearly had not slipped through the window and ultimately what i found is there was a piece of plywood that had been knocked out and he had made a tunnel through and he escaped Yes, this cat went full Shawshank and has escaped and he's now at large. And now I actually have no clue as to where he's at and what he's up to. My hope is that the experience that he just went through is enough to keep him from coming back to our farm, but he's most definitely at large. I'll be keeping an eye out and if I happen to spot Andy Dufresne, I will tell you guys and let you know. But it seems like our cat has become a fugitive.